die every year annually prematurely from breathing air pollution. And we can't even quantify the additional annual deaths from exposure to extreme weather events from um, associated with climate change. My goal is to try to understand how these components interact in order to minimise future development of disease. Air pollution is composed of solids, liquids and gases, including very small particles known as particulate matter, which are comprised primarily of carbon, but also have associated metals and chemicals. These are formed naturally, but also from human activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels, including diesel and carbon um, in cars. And they are continuing to increase, especially in developing nations. Once inhaled, they can penetrate deep into the lungs and also into the bloodstream. So they're often classified by size. And this is important because it's often the smallest ones that are invisible that contribute most to negative health outcomes, such as lung and heart disease, things like asthma and heart attacks. Additionally, global temperatures are rising and we are seeing increasingly frequent and extreme um, heat waves, which are also known to contribute to, um, to stress the respiratory and cardiovascular systems and indeed cause excess mortality. Notably, both of these exposures, air pollution and heat waves, will um, be more harmful to certain vulnerable populations like the young, the elderly and um, those with pre-existing lung disorders. And this is due to a number of factors, including the young children tend to have um, growing lungs that are more vulnerable in childhood, as well as a natural decline in lung function with old age. So really, really vulnerable populations in society. So we're at a stage where we know that air pollution drives climate change and is itself increased by global warming but the combined risk from the two is still poorly understood. So in my project, I will be looking to first expose lung cells um, to particles collected locally in the United Kingdom and heat, and then combine the two to understand first the individual risk and then the combined risk to both of these exposures in the system. I'll then be looking at the effect of these exposures in a co-culture of lung and blood cells to try and understand the systemic response, testing the permeability. And finally, I will be looking at the effect of these exposures on cardiac cells to try and understand any potential impact on the heart. So altogether, these techniques will allow me to hopefully understand the temperature and health interactions which may influence health outcomes so that collectively we can reduce adverse exposures and hopefully this will help us live healthier, happier and longer lives. Thank you.